I've been talking about opening up a professional trading company. And I've sent out an email, a lot of people had been interested. And I, I got one thing, I don't wanna sound like Petty Pendergrass. So I'm gonna say this as gently as I can. I plan on meeting the standard. And that's what we're gonna get into with this video. I've seen a lot of people say there's a way around the pattern day trading rule and by converting your account to cash. That has a lot of limitations within itself. So what I'm gonna do is open up my brokerage account with 25,000 or more, and I'm gonna be able to trade the way that I wanna trade, because I'm going to meet the standard. And one of the things that I've consistently seen on YouTube is a lot of full-time traders cannot meet the standard. So I have a feeling, and if you're a trader or you're doing uh, some day trading and then put in the comments, I have a feeling, uh, this isn't confirmed, but I have a feeling that because I'm gonna be able to enter the market with a larger cash position, certain opportunities will be revealed to me that are not revealed to these traders who don't have that cash position. Once again, just a thought, because I was watching this guy who became a $10 million trader, and one of the things that I have is mental discipline. Like, you know, when I was in the storage auction business, there would be periods where I would just have a bunch of bad buys, back to back to back, which is kind of similar to having a bunch of red days. And I was not in a position where I could just stop and take two or three months off. I had to work myself out of that situation because I had to keep buying. Just like a quarterback who throws an interception in the first quarter. He's got three more quarters. He cannot like, oh, take a, mm -mm. And this is something I have seen because I feel, once again, this will be realized once I actually start trading. I'm going to start doing trading from a demo account or paper trading. I'm gonna do that for a few months before I start doing live trading. But I really appreciate the thoughts and consideration. But once again, I will be able to meet the standard. And this is gonna be very, very important in this video. Now, if you have bought the corporate papers or bought the corporate toolbox or the intellectual property school or the program, you will get this professional trading training free. Once again, you will get this as part, you know, I'm just gonna put it out there because I've already set up a group, I've already set up a training portal because one of the things that I'm seeing is it takes time. And you know, once again, uh, someone commented that they were open, able to open up their brokerage accounts with the LLCs online. I am going to go with trusted brokers. I'm not going to go with a broker that I've never heard of or some offshore broker. I have seen that can be problematic. And Cobra Trading has it where you. It looks like it looks like you could set your corporate entity up online, but then they hit you up with like, all right, we'll contact you in two days and you gotta mail some stuff in. So any reputable broker, large broker, you will not be able to open up your trading account entity online. You can set up yourself all day long on all of them, but to set up a professional corporation, and this is another thing, Going back to setting up your account on a cash basis, uh, you have to wait until your cash settles, which just takes standard across the board, two days. So these are two days where you're waiting for your cash to settle that you cannot, you cannot trade. And once again, to establish a professional trading account, you need 720 plus trades per year, and you need to actively trade in the market 75% of the time that the market is open. Those are 
And the, that, that last criteria, I, I'm, this is something I think that most of the traders on YouTube do not meet because once they hit a bad streak, they stop trading. They take a week off, a month off, two, taking a few days off is not gonna hurt you. But when you're taking a month or two or three months off, that's gonna invalidate that last rule of setting up a professional trading account. And you know, thank you for all the folks who are supporting me in this endeavor. And I was like, it's like, oh, this is like the car business. I know how this is gonna end up. It is not like the car business because for me to achieve my aims and goals, I don't have to make any money. And I, I know that's hard for a lot of you to wrap your heads around because everyone is wanting to do day trading or options trading and make all this little, make large sums of money from a little bit of money. I already have companies that make money. I am looking for deductions. That's my primary aim. And I think, I think a lot of you don't understand that for the reason that you're not in my position. So I think that's one of the reasons that a lot, because you're still trying to make money. I am kind of at that enjoyment stage of money where I get to enjoy my money. I get to buy things. I get to enjoy it. So I'm, I got a different objective than that regular person out there who's trying to get into options trading or day trading to make a lot of money to improve their lifestyle. I already have a pretty good lifestyle. So once again, take that in consideration before you comment. And once again, thank you for your comments. I do read all of them, even the crappy ones. Let's get into it. Why Leroy cannot read before? Oh yeah, anyone that wants to be part of the program of the Intellectual Property School, go below. It's gonna be in the first comment or the description and the price is gonna go up September 1st. So if you wanna get in there for this juicy discounts, cause like right now, I'm not even finished building it out and what's there is gonna take you months to do, months. This is a collegiate level curriculum where you have to do things, you have to study, you have to do your homework to be successful. So take that. All right, so why can't Leroy read? Um, this is a big, big issue in our current society. One of the problems is, and let's kind of go way back because I did some research on this, because you would think with all of the technology, all of the innovation that we have that reading scores across the board would have improved when in fact they have gotten worse. And we're gonna talk about why reading scores going down is not a good thing for the economy. First of all, let's kind of go back to um, the No Child Left Behind Act. This brought on a lot of damage because this literally got rid of trade schools. Yes, when I was coming up, college was an option. There was a program when I was in high school where people could come to high school for a certain part of the day and then go to a job where they got paid for part of the day. And they had, I remember we had welding, we had uh, auto shop, we had carpentry. We had a lot of trades, a lot of trades when I was in high school that you could like go ahead and take a class on how to be a welder or you could take a class on electronics or so many things that would prepare you for a trade. But when the No Child Left Behind Act, the orientation went that everyone was gonna to go to college. And this is one of the reasons that it's so hard to find competent tradesmen, welders, plumbers. Like, it's really hard to find these guys because the messaging has been that you should go to college to have a good and fulfilling life. And with this big push, this really big push of sending everyone to college and a big emphasis on test scores, they actually stopped flunking people. When I was in high school, if you did not meet the standard, if you didn't meet the standard, they would leave your butt behind. You would have to repeat the second, third, fourth grade. I had a friend named Scrap. 
I'm not going to say his name. I'm not going to say his government name. He got left back two times. And then he was still in elementary school when we were going off to middle school and he saw taillights and that kind of lit a fire under his butt because he never got left behind again. And to the, this day, he is an attorney. See, one of the things is I grew up in an outcome based education system. If you did what you needed to do, they would pass you. You would get good grades with the no, the child, no left behind, the, the no left behind child act created an environment where children were pushed along, removing consequences for not doing their schoolwork. Let me say this again. This was a huge, huge problem when they removed consequences from their schoolwork. I went through an education system. Once again, if you didn't do what you need to do, they would flunk you in a heartbeat. You would get like, they would flunk you like, all right, you, you're not going to pass. You're going to have to repeat the third, fourth, fifth, whatever. They would do that in a heartbeat. Ask yourself, when is the last time you've heard of a child being left behind, not graduating, not moving to the next grade? Ask yourself, when's the last time you heard of that? And this is something that's interesting. A lot of parents, once they got information, because, you know, with children, there were parents that deliberately held their children out of school for, you know, because they had what was called like the, the early birthday and the late birthday. And this has been clinical studies done on this, that children who were older when they entered the first grade did much better from an emotional standpoint and the maturity level. So you had parents deliberately holding their children back so that they could have the emotional development in school and perform better academically. This was a big, big thing. You had a lot of parents was like, no, no. Because essentially I remember we had people because of the early birthday I graduated high school when I was 18 because I have a late birthday. My birthday is in October. We had people who were graduating high school at 16 and going to college. And then what was what they were finding out that, you know, this is a, this is kind of depressing. I was part of the nerd clique and part of the nerd clique. There was a little guy by the name of Jimmy DiGiovanni who was gifted. He was a genius. And he kept, he, he, he passed like they, he jumped like three grades. So from an intellectual standpoint, he could do the work, but from an emotional maturity standpoint, he was behind, behind with dating, behind with socialization, because even though from an intellectual standpoint, he was able to do the work, he was not emotionally where everyone else was. And that was a huge, huge problem for Jimmy because unfortunately Jimmy ended up taking his own life because he never fit in. This genius ended up taking his own life. So with the no child left behind act and this big emphasis on test scores and pushing people into college, the emphasis on reading comprehension got lost. When I was growing up, there used to be things called bookmobiles. There would be like a summer reading list. There was a strong correlation between high reading levels and competency in school. So if you read really, really well, you typically perform at a high level in school because reading comprehension is the first block in learning. You must read the information you must fully comprehend it and then you must execute on the information. But if you have poor reading comprehension skills, you could find yourself challenged by the material. And what they did once they stopped flunking people and they started passing people along, these people did not meet the standard. So what happened is they just kept getting pushed along. They kept put, getting pushed along. 
And do you think that this changed in college? No, it didn't. You have a whole bunch of mediocre, and I don't say that to be disrespectful, I say that to be factual. You have a whole bunch of people who have mediocre reading comprehension skills who are in possession of a college degree. Now, what did this do? This actually watered down having a degree. Like it used to be having a degree meant that you were well-trained, well-educated. Today, not so much. It's to the point that Google, Apple, these corporations have realized that these people are not properly educated, they're not well-trained, and they're actually hiring people who have demonstrated the ability to do the work more so than someone with a degree. Now, I feel that at your Harvard's, your MIT's, your uh, Chicago University, the standards are still really, really high, and these students with these poor reading comprehension skills will never actually be admitted. So this is why you're seeing someone that will graduate from a Harvard, a Stanford, MMIT, a Berkeley. They're still getting the prestige. These are prestige degrees because they have refused to lower the standard. If you don't meet the standard, you're not getting in MIT. I had a friend who went to MIT and my friend, he was like, uh, he we didn't go to the same school, but we just knew each other. He was like the smartest guy in his school, right? He gets to MIT and I remember, I remember him telling me, he says, I feel dumb here. It's like, there are people who are way smarter than me here. So what that did is lit a fire under him and he started working really hard and he graduated 50th in his class, which is an incredible imp and impressive accomplishment to graduate 50 from MIT. That is a, that's something you can put on your resume. I graduate, I was the 50th student in my class per academic. That's something you can put on your resume. That's something that carries weight. And he rolled into a professional career. He's done very, very well. But one of the reasons that the global reset and the recession is so bad because right now, and I don't, I don't say this to be disrespectful, I don't say this to be mean, but you have a lot of people who think that they're well-educated when they're not. Let me say this again. You have a lot of people who believe themselves to be well-educated, well-schooled because they have a degree but these people are struggling to find jobs or they're struggling to find a job that they really like. Let's put it this way. They can get a job that doesn't require a degree all day long, but to get the job that they actually enjoy that's fulfilling, they struggle with that. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's because of that poor education. There are people, and I have seen this, I've experienced this as an educator. I have had college graduates come at me about something and then I see that they had poor reading skills, poor comprehension skills. And these people held degrees. Once again, I will say that my education from the 70s and the 80s where if you did not meet the standard they left you back was a better education than passing someone along for esteem. And because at some point we all reach a point of reckoning when we realize things are not quite right. At some point, every person has that moment of reckoning. For some of us, it comes quite early. For some of us, it comes much later in life. And I'm going to tell you, when it comes much later in life, it's ugly. It is really, really ugly. I know of someone who is single, who's cute, and who's now 57. And she kept passing over these dudes because, once again, you know, she was one of these people who she has a degree, 
but she was one of these people with poor reading comprehension skills because I don't know her, know her, but I know of her and I've met her and I've had conversations with this girl. And one of the things, like if you want to dramatically change your communication abilities, I don't even know if you can get it. There used to be this program called Verbal Advantage. And by the fact of learning new words and increasing your verbal ability, you can actually increase your IQ a little bit. Uh, it used to be promoted quite heavily on the Rush Limbaugh show. And this is an example of someone who has good reading comprehension skills and an excellent command of the English language. Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh had an extreme grasp of the hum of the English language. He had extreme reading comprehension skills. And this is what's funny. Rush Limbaugh, who was a millionaire to the tune of several hundred million, was not a college graduate. Let me say that again. Google it. Go ahead and Google it. Rush Limbaugh did not graduate college. Was worth, at the time of his death, four or five hundred million dollars because he had such an amazing grasp of the English language and very, very, very high reading comprehension skills. That's what built his career in radio. Those two things. Another one, the guy who played Jeffrey from the Fresh Prince. He's someone else that didn't go to college, but because of the way that he, his carriage, if you don't know what carriage is, carriage is how you present yourself. His carriage, his disposition. And I'm using words, so a lot of you like, what does that mean? And years and years ago in Reader's Digest, they would have like these words, this, this little skill set, this a skill test. And they have 25 words and routinely, I would get 20 to 24 consistently. And I was 11, 12 years old. Words like disposition, carriage are not high level words. They're not. This is something you should know. And if you don't, this is more evidence to what I'm saying, because right now you got people with college degrees who would struggle to read a book written on a 12th grade level. They would struggle. When I was writing my book, making money A to Z with self storage and auctions, my editor had me remove certain words because she says most people don't know what those words mean. Calvinistic was one of the words. Disposition. She had me remove those words because once again, so many people have been passed along without a proper education. And what, what do I mean by proper education? A proper education is either you get the education or, and you will pass like I was in the military. I went to 92 Bravo medical laboratory technician. We had what was called go or no go. We had these tests called crucials. You know why they were called crucial? Cause if you flunked, you didn't pass and you got downgraded to 91 alpha. There was a downgrade path. Like if you were in 92 Bravo school and you did not pass, they would recycle you down the hill to 91 alpha and man, they wasn't pretty because we wore white. We, we looked like we were serving ice cream. We wore whites. We wore green hats down the, down the hill, 91 alphas. They were in TA 50. They were in BDUs. I mean, I very much felt that my experience at Fort Sam Houston at um, the United States Health Sciences Academy felt very collegiate because we didn't have people watching over us. We had two classes because my name ends with a C. I was in the morning class, which means that we were up at 4.30 in class. And then the evening class, they came back like, we got out of class like 2.30. And then the evening class would get out like, I believe nine, I think. So that's how, that's what I went through. And without that, consequence in your education, you're going to get a poor education, whether you have a certificate, a framed degree, 
I, I got a question for you degree holders because many of you are going to be really pissed off at this video. How easy was it? Well, here's the question. Do you have to look for a job or do jobs find you? I have a friend who is very, very smart, who did not graduate college, but he has a high degree of reading comprehension skills. He's a nerd just like me, and he doesn't look for jobs. Jobs find him because of his pedigree. So if you have a degree and every time you have to go look for a job, that's a sign that you're not properly educated. Because if you were properly educated, people would be looking for you. You would be recruited. Headhunters would be looking for you. Once again, I know I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be unkind or disrespectful. I'm just trying to kick it to you like it really is. Because the people who did not receive the proper education are the ones who are going to suffer the most during this global reset. I mean, I'm just here, you know, a lot of people say, this is the doom and gloom channel. If me speaking to you like you're an adult and telling you the truth is doom and gloom, then so be it. Because I'd rather do that than to pretend that with your mediocre reading comprehension skills that you can get this $250,000 a year job. It ain't gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. Even though you may have a degree, it's just not gonna happen because you don't have the competency to do the job because of that poor education. And once again, you can blame all of the people who created the No Le Child Left Behind Act where we got rid of trades, just literally, uh, I think if I went to a high school today, I would not recognize this high school compared to my high school. Because like I said, we had several programs that were based for the trades that prepared people to leave high school to enter jobs and to make not just okay money, but really good money. Whereas so many people are focused on going to college or becoming a YouTuber or a TikToker that they don't understand that they had a really poor education and it's showing up because when it's really going to hit you is when you get my age, when you turn 55 and you're able to look back on your life, you're going to know because like I said, everyone has this moment of reckoning. Everyone has this moment where they're, it's a come to Jesus moment where you have to be a hundred percent real with yourself. And for a lot of people, that moment hasn't come. And I feel the worst time for that moment to come is when you're like 62. You know, you still got time to kind of do some stuff. Colonel Sanders, I think he started Kentucky Fried Chicken when he was in his 60s. But that's an exception. That's not the rule. But once again, if you have children, you should read to your children. When they're like little, little, like one, two years, you should read stories to them at night. You should read to your children because that's going to help improve their reading comprehension and their reading ability, because that is the number one skill for computer programmers. That's the number one skill for cybersecurity people. This is the number one skill for all of these people in these tech jobs. They can read and they can read very well and they can comprehend. Like I said, the MIT's, the University of Chicago, Stanford, Berkeley, Harvard, they have not watered down their standards. That's why they reject so many people every year. I think something like 50,000 kids apply every year at Harvard and the Harvard only takes like four, 4,000 or something like that. I'm not hundred percent sure about the numbers, but I know that the number of kids who apply for Harvard every year is substantially less than the people that they admit each year because you're not getting into a Harvard or a Princeton or an MIT with poor reading comprehension skills. It ain't happening. It's just not happening. And this is why people who operate in those uh, groups, that's why they kind of date and hang out in that group. They don't really date outside the group. I'm serious. Once you, once you, like, and this is something else too. I think 
at one point it used to be 70% of the kids who graduated from Harvard actually married someone that graduated from Harvard. But this was like in the 60s. So I know it's much, much lower now. But typically, they don't date outside the group. They don't associate outside the group because they know. They know. If you have poor reading comprehension skills, man, life is hard. Life is really, really hard. And you're unaware of it. And like I said, I feel that a lot of you were cheated. Let's just, just say this. You were cheated because you paid this money, you went to this university, you got a degree hanging on your wall, and you're no better educated than that person who doesn't have a degree. I know that hurts. And I, 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 like I said, once again, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just, once again, if you want to disagree with me, that's perfectly fine, but look at your life. And once again, that litmus test, do you have to look for jobs or do jobs look for you? That right there speaks volumes. My friends who are in the nerd clique, they don't look for jobs. They don't look for jobs. All my, my little friends with jobs, they don't look for jobs. Jobs find them. I got a friend who used to work in banking and she's changed jobs three times over the last six years. And each time they came and found her. She did not go looking for them. She woke up, there was an email. It's like, hey, we're interested in you. Once again, if you have to look for a job and jobs don't find you, that's an indicator of a poor education. I know, once again, this is gonna be a controversial video. A lot of people are not gonna like it. But once again, I think a lot of you were cheated. You were swindled, you were bamboozled, you were led astray because you were sold this thing as if it's this thing when it's not that thing. And a lot of you should be getting a refund from your colleges. Real talk, real talk. All right, so if you want to get a proper education, enroll in the intellectual property school. Like last Last training session, I got a little salty. I got a little aggressive because I kind of jumped on people because, you know, when I was in school, teachers would damn near cuss you out if you were clowning. It's like, I'm here. I got up every day to make sure you learn this stuff. And I remember that because they cared about you. They cared about you getting a good education. So I care. And one of the things I'm getting ready to do is have two live trainings per week, one for the intellectual property school, and one for the art of business, the art of profit business school, where I teach you real business skills and stuff. So those links are below. First comment, just go ahead and jump in that. And the price goes up September 1st.